miss the term fisticuffs. Ah, hmm. you can bring it back. I feel like we should. But then you'd have to be a pugilist if you're gonna if you're gonna mm-hmm. yeah, partake absolutely. in fisticuffs. So something, something to do with your ears. There's another term, ear. Mm. It's like ear boxing, but I don't think. That's oh it. yeah, box. Well, you can box someone's ears. That's you for box sure. someone's ears. That's you what it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Molly Wop. Ooh, Molly Wop. Molly yeah. Wop. That's like a, that sounds like a Batman term. I've never heard that before. Yeah. Did Charles Stanley die? Yes, he did. Yeah. When? I thought that story. That was the first story that was gonna be interesting. What? His his grands. Is Andy taking over? I won't tell you the story because it's funny it, it was like what so if he wants to read that story i'd can. rather you tell me so you can just so oh I'll yeah let's it. do it well that one you might have to just read a little bit oh about okay it. let me yeah well, yeah just like kind of set it up and but I, don't, I don't know is it i don't know if it's that i don't know if it's that much discussion is it's more like huh just interesting yeah well i'm sure we can figure something out to yeah. launch off of i'm not sure andy would take over for charles though right because they were pretty different yeah they're in the same they had different churches anyway andy's church is yeah. bigger than charles i think charles it had was, a global yeah. bigger global influence i thought originally he did take it over uh he was the youth pastor there for a while so that's how he started i didn't know if he ever took it over because charles never really retired yeah you know what it is charles stanley took it over from his dad that's yeah. what i was thinking and i think that i think the idea was that andy was going to take over but uh from what i understood like it it was it was rough it was rough working for his dad Oh, was it? That's if I remember hearing Andy talk about it. So I might be putting words in his mouth, but I thought him saying like, "Yeah, it just no, I he did it," right. and then he felt like he wanted to go do his own thing. Yeah, working with your dad's a oh, interesting dynamic. Yeah, uh, like I was talking about that on Sunday. That transition from like going from a child to a friend yeah. is not a normal. That's a very odd. Well, I don't a, know transition. Let's talk about that a little bit. So first, weird. let's open with a little bit of like, how much has Charles Stanley influenced you personally at all? Sure. Just curious, since you know, just he died recently. So is there been it was Charles Stanley? That you can think of had immediate impact, or even Andy Stanley, because we're talking about the family d- dynamic there. Chucky Stan. Yeah, uh, let's open with that. Welcome to You Won't Hate It. My name is Josh. I'm Ryan. This, oh. Oh, wait. Welcome to You Won't Hate It. I'm Ryan. Look at life <laughs> lens of pastors at the length of a cigar. It's kind of Josh's I'm Josh. Fault. He said his name was Josh before. <laughs> I did. I'm Ryan. It, it's the, <laughs> it's kind of, that was such like a what is that? Yeah. 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 Hold, hold, hold on. <laughs> open your mouth. I'll throw you a treat. <laughs> <laughs> Ring the bell. Bing. Sound <laughs> bell. Right. Oh, sorry. Okay. So you know we're You're Ryan. Uh, I'm Floyd. I'm Joe. So Charles Stanley, you're saying he, did, d- he died recently. So did we're the just Stanley saying, family have an impact on Stan you. Stan fam. I remember watching when I first got saved, but I couldn't think yeah, of anything that Charlie, stood out. Charlie, Charles Stanley was the leadership guy, right? I think, honestly, like I think that's more guru? Andy. Uh, oh, is it really? Yeah, I Andy does remember. more leadership stuff. Charles Stanley was more foundational faith stuff. Okay. Okay, good. I'm glad yeah. someone here knows more about this. Because I don't, I don't think, uh, I think I know of Charles Stanley. I'm mm-hmm. sure I've heard him preach a dozen times. Andy Stanley then, my one of my good buddies, led worship for him. He, They were like super good friends. He was one of the campus leaders. Yeah. He went on to do some other great stuff, write some books. And so... I know, I'm pretty sure you've read all his books, right? Like the Sticky Leadership or something like that? Uh, I've okay, read so pretty that sure. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I've read a couple of Andy's books. Um, I've read, I've listened to his podcast. He has a leadership podcast I've listened to quite yeah. a bit. He's yeah. phenomenal. I mean, yeah. He's yeah. great principles. He, I mean, come on, the guy's great. A lot he's of a people big use, mega church use his uh, preaching notes. Like he he did a book on like how to like preaching style. Well, a lot, I, a lot oh, of guys no, I did that at one point. It was the he you me. He, did, he like says that. it in a verbiage like that. I still use like, sticky point. Like I do a sticky like where sticky yeah, point, I kind of yeah. just like what am I getting at here? So What's funny myself, is like, you actually follow his format unintentionally. I guess more than I think any of us in terms of no, more than me. It's good point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's is is preaching format because you open with a story every time. every time, and I think he he's like yeah. it's like me, you, God. I forget how yeah, he says it, but he does it in that way where he's like, I always open with a story about me, then tie it in with a story about you, and then bring it back to God's view of something. Do like you guys? It. There was you, a format. You're gonna say something? I'll, ask, I'll ask, answer this afterwards. I'm saying I'm gonna ask. I don't want to forget. Do you use a format when you're laying out your preaching? But go ahead. What were we gonna say? The curriculum that we use for our children's ministry, I believe, comes out of Andy's church as well. Oh, orange. orange. I believe orange. orange. Orange is fantastic. Great yeah. I think that's awesome. Oh, yeah. wow. Uh, so super influential. Yeah. What's the, and they were, he really actually, I think, rose to fame because of the passion, right? Isn't that, wasn't the worship team from there, like Louis Giglio, weren't they his like worship team? Because that's Louis, when I first heard of him. Was, uh, Louis is connected remember passion. to somehow. Is he? I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. I want to say passion was their worship team, but I could be wrong. I'm but I, then, then I started, and what's the name of the church? North something? No, I don't remember. Mm. We're terrible at this. I, we're, yeah. I'm not up on cri- contemporary I, Christian I stuff. I sadly am not. I respect these guys like a, a ton. I just don't follow people. Um, North Point Ministries. I was, was going to say North Point, North Point, but I'm like, it's still in Atlanta. 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 Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. they yeah. have a second campus. They have a ton of campuses, yeah. right? I right. thought they had a bunch. Yeah, well, I think they have a few, but they have another one.
one that's that's pretty significant. Like it's oh a, yeah, like it's like a big one. Holstein's yeah, in Atlanta, right? Uh, no, no, he's in Texas. Texas somewhere, Houston. Okay, so he has a stadium. Like he has an old football yeah. stadium. Oh yeah, right? those are yeah, yeah. massive. Okay. So okay, uh, so we're talking about Charles. We're talking about Andy. I obviously definitely more influenced by Andy, even just you know being a, the contemporary culture of Christianity and pastors. Right. I haven't really read any of his books. Uh, I just heard one point. At one point, he, he broke down something and he talked about this this sticky point idea, and I thought it just was a good idea to be like I should at least to myself be like, what am I getting at? Do you know what I mean? Like, so just like, what is the point of what I'm saying? So I always just add that into my message when I break down like a format. Do you guys have a format that you use for preaching? For a while, I used um, Ed Young. He used mind maps. And for a while, I did that. Sounds like a good movie. It was uh, mind maps. It, it was it was actually a really it, it, it's, it's no I that's feel mind like that's melt. Like a, oh, uh, like I, a brain vacuum. Yeah, yes. it feels like it, was, it feels brain like I'm map. just trying to map. I'm mapping mm-hmm. his brain. Off. It sucks, and it still it works really well for me. Like if you if you're doing something short, uh, ten minute, fifteen minute, because it works like in the circular motion, like a clock. It's kind of weird to lay out in the beginning, but mind maps work. It, it's a great memory tool for me. Cool. Mm-hmm. I've never heard yeah. of that, but that's not yeah. surprising. You read a lot of stuff. I do. So. Read a lot. You read a lot. Do you, do you have a Do you have a format? Nope, Ryan. I've used formats in the past, and they are totally hindering for me. Yeah, like, isn't that funny how some um, things can be more of a weight yeah, than a yeah. freedom? And I, at the time, I actually think I probably the, the sermons were probably great because they followed a great path, and like that's I think made it's, sense. it's better for the audience because it's like hmm. it's very clear. Yeah, but I don't feel like it's me anymore. Yeah, and so now I ramble and nothing happens. Do you think you getting to that point was through all those? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, I think part of the journey of public speaking in general, not just preaching, is you you hear you hear people that you really like, and then you emulate them. Mm-hmm. And then after emulating them for a while, you're like, wait, this isn't as much my voice. And so you, you slide into, I want my voice to be heard. Then as you're sharing your voice, you're like, I want to be more clear now. It's totally a, I think that's part of just life mm-hmm. and growth. And yeah. even when it comes to, you name it, like nutrition, working out, you f- see somebody else, mm-hmm. they're, they're a model. That's what I think Charles Stanley was amazing at, is he gave preachers and congregants a model to follow yeah. that was good. And I mean, here's the deal. I don't know the guy at all. He might be terrible. We saw, we saw him. He was the guy that we saw at the breakfast and he told all the stories. Weren't we together for that, for the pastor's breakfast? Yes. And he told, he just told stories. Yeah. One after another, yeah. the entire time, because you know he's been preaching his for sure. whole life. Yeah, and I think he's from what. And again, I don't know the guy, so I'm not advocating for him. But he he seemed like a good guy. There wasn't a wake of damage er, behind him. He didn't like leave a trail of bodies like a lot of these guys. There's yeah. some guys that I respect and love more than him that I thought the world of, and then when they passed away, turns out they're terrible. Like uh, mm-hmm. Robbie Zacharias. Robbie Zacharias mm-hmm. was one of my favorite guys in Christendom <laughs> over the years. He's, he was one of my top 10, like most looked yeah. up to guys. And to find that out, I still love the work that he did, but I was a legit heartbroken because I'm like, dude, yeah, that, that is frick, actually- man. We live such a short time on this planet. It's yeah. so short. If you have influence, like the Bible talks about it, shore up your issues. And I know it's tough. I know it's difficult because the more people start clamoring over you, but just get your head screwed on straight, realize that you're not that big of a deal yeah. and stop doing stupid things. I think it's, I think it's actually where compartmentalizing is helpful. We don't do that. And forget, take it out of church. Just lots of things. There could be somebody who can be the best musician in the world and they are a terrible at a lot of other things. And you can just say, yeah, that's the part I don't sure. choose to support. I just but don't I also like acknowledge them. this other part is really good. Yeah, I just, and that's, I think it's easy to do. Hey, this actor's wonderful, but he's got some screwy ideas. When your good thing is a moral compass, like you're a it's preacher true. for crying out loud. You're, right. you're literally the vision of morality on this right. planet. You're God's mouthpiece. But yeah. then to turn around and live an immoral life is infuriating. Well, and it's hypocritical. Yeah. And it, oh, it, it is hypocritical because you're instructing the others how to do it. And I think it just, it, it gives a, it's a bad mark on God yeah. who you're representing. I, if you're representing yourself as an actor, as a musician, as a whatever, a life coach, I don't give a rip when you screw up. I go, yeah, who cares? You're representing yourself anyway. Self-promotion is, I was just talking to Ashley about this. Self-promotion and it's just a personal pet peeve, is the dumbest thing we do on this planet. I think the way that we run around and we're like, look at me, I'm so great. Everyone fall. I'm like, dude. I wrote a book. I wrote a book. <laughs> I wrote a book. <laughs> like when you wear a t-shirt it's for that. Just, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, if you have a t-shirt, there's a problem. I'm, I'm with you. My thought is too is, you're right on this. 
I don't know what to do with that with Robbie Zacharias because his teaching, I think his is the most damaging, mostly probably because he was the most influential on me. For sure, me uh, too. I agree. And I think his teaching was definitely more at the academic level. Mm-hmm. And so he wasn't like, look at me, I'm this. But he more. brought it down to, he, he was the best, I think one of the most intelligent guys I'd heard in a long time, bring it down to a, a normal, loving yeah. level and yeah. like, that like, anyone could understand. He was able to articulate very complex oh. ideas in such a simplistic way that yeah. it made it applicable to a broad audience. He was a and true at the same apologist. Time, yeah. At the same time, be able to discuss in that same level at Harvard. Mm-hmm. You know, listen right. to all the Harvard tapes and read all the transcripts yeah. of that. It's like, I, for someone like him, I'm like, this dude just had demons. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he had some, some serious issues. I, it is I wonder, because I, I... So I... After it happened, I was pissed, ignored it, didn't want to look at it. I basically pretended like it didn't happen for a long time. I kept saying stuff like, it doesn't negate the stuff that he said. Like, I was kind of... Mm-hmm. And then I went, you know what? I need to... I just... just morbid curiosity. I just wanted to kind of get the full story. It started way earlier than I thought, not, not sure. just the sexual right. immorality. He he lied a little bit when it came to... No, no, the credentialing was credentials also credentials and stuff. And so, oh, I didn't hear this. It, yeah. And it happened early. So he, it he was like... He a doctorate that he didn't have. Yeah, or, little stuff like ooh, that, that where I was Little stuff? Like, yeah, that that's, is, that's not little. It's big. I mean... I don't think a doctor's that big of a deal. That's why. I think it's very It's small. mostly because your wife just became Ashley a doctor. Just, yeah, yeah, so it's not a big deal. Left the chat. I mean, Ashley left the chat. <laughs> you do, you, you do <laughs> live with one, so it does make it a little more normalized. And we as of we say week? it constantly. It's a, it's it's Friday. the, well, the thing that's the neat is the one percent. She's like the like a doctorate is he puts you in the one percent of the population of the e- world, which I think is pretty cool. Even at the heart of that, one percent with him claiming to have a doctorate lower is he's constantly going 0. around point eight seven. I was going to say, I mean, wow. it's, it's sub 1%. Why does, why does Floyd know that? I don't know. What's but at the, that point, the, it's that like, point. What percent will I be in? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Floyd, you got a doctorate. That's not how big it is. I mean, do you that? make more than 30000 a year? Point one eight percent Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. So if you do so that. So no, I'm not in the 1% is what we're saying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I make twenty seven grand a year. <laughs> yeah. Twenty nine nine nine. But even like it, even with Robbie Zacharias' right. situation with the doctorate, Nice. That's speaking into this idea of feeling inferior, right? He's this genius. Sure. Right? Everybody else has, yeah. they have credentialing and he doesn't. And at some point he felt like it's not enough that I have this brilliant take. Yeah. I want to also be able to say I'm also have the same credentials as other people. Oh. He was like pristine while he was alive. He was the, he was kind of the last bastion. The guy that um, he mentored that can't remember his name, another very famous guy who still does the apologist work. Um, Slobby Zacharias. Mm. It is, you know what's funny is it's something like that. But it's weird because he's he's probably just as intelligent. He might be more intelligent. He doesn't have that that loving kindness. Yeah. yeah. And so every time he speaks, I'm like, yeah, he's right, but he seems mean. Yeah. And like, it's just... And that was the thing yeah. that made Robbie unique is yeah. his ability to do it in such a way that was so loving and he seemed so approachable. I well, mean... And is it, is it this well, idea that... He apparently he, was he very approachable. Is, approachable. is it there is this idea that he knew he needed mass of amounts of grace, so he was very gracious. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you see that with some guys. It's, it's, frustrating. it's frustrating that he passed away because I would love to hear him talk about it. I'd love to uh, hear him yes. humbled. Not like I want to see him humbled, but like I would love to hear that, you know, uh, like five years after it all came out, he gets yeah. fired, he gets humiliated, loses everything, whatever. But then as he gets right with the Lord in that regard, yeah. it would be so neat to hear him articulate like what, where the brokenness was, where yeah. the where it started, how it crept in. And the journey to restoration would, be, journey, would, yeah. be, would be great to watch because that's, that's to everybody. You know what I mean? We all have brokenness and there's a journey sure. to restoration. Because I and bet you it started very small. Mm-hmm. And I think you're right. It started, it probably started with pride. And I think that's where where a lot of these guys that I really, again, I don't know Charles Stanley, but I do admire him, even in his, because he spoke very sternly about things. He still had a level of humility that I think is very cool. In touch yeah. ministries. Is that what it was? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That, I remember, we, used to, we used to book their cruises. No way. Oh, yeah. oh that's funny. Yeah. It that's feels funny. like with Robbie, though, that same the same mechanism that makes you fake a doctorate is the same mechanism that caused some of his other issues. You're looking for accolades. You're looking for acknowledgement. You're looking for, you're trying to scratch that itch. Of, At that point, acceptance yeah. in the academic community. And you're okay. looking for love. So let's Let's do this. Mm. How do you, because I already know all four of us struggle with that, probably more than a lot of people. Sure. So how do you do it? 
Because that's really difficult. I, and I, 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 I hate saying it, but if we were young and got the accolades that Ravi Zacharias did, I'd be worse than him. 100%. Okay, yeah. and so maybe wait, not, so then, maybe so not the sexual side down. because I right. like cheating is the worst thing in the world to me, but I would be horrible. How do you stave off? How do you fight off the that pride and the, like you were saying, it, it is an innate desire to be loved and praised. And recognized. Recognized. Okay. Yeah. Is, is that, is that a, I'm just asking. Or is that bad, right? Is that, is that, that, is that the, is that a pride that wants to feel loved? Uh, is that really where that's coming from? I don't even know. I'm just asking, you know what I mean? Like yeah. if you want people, cause it might not be pride. It might be more just like, you're just broken, feel sad, unworthy. You know what I mean? Like so okay. my people might chase that to just feel, they're not at, they're not at zero wanting to be 50. They might be negative 50 and just wanting to get to zero. Right. Mm. So yeah. what's yeah. the, I guess, what do you do? Whether you're at negative 50, whether you're at zero, what if, if you're like, how do you stop, even if you're healthy and people start saying how great you are how do you how do you i guess do this right how, how do you go through life as a normal person or as a pastor and not base your existence and your self-worth off other people that's what is going on right now right. in the world when yeah. you look at our culture when you look at a lot of the brokenness of people that walk through the doors of our church they are fighting and trying so hard to make other people think that they're something, that they have worth. And I think God the whole time is the one who puts that worth on us. I don't want to jump the gun, but like, what do you say to people? How yeah. do we do it? How do you do it? Once you do get to the point where you receive an accolade or you receive the attention, even sexual in his case, where does it become enough? Because once you've crossed that line, you continue to cross it over and over and over yeah. again. And it leads down a really dark and dangerous road. I, I do think that that's one of the reasons why we hear all the time, man, every time I come into this church, I just cry. I cry the whole time I'm here. And I, it's so bad. Wish it was because over. it's so yeah. terrible. So the smell. When is it's the preaching going to start? That was the that, funniest oh comment yesterday. Gosh. That um, was hilarious. There was a and then it was the longest wait to that preach a long in wait. our existence. Well, especially at the and they, I loved it. They asked it like at, we're we're doing the, we're doing the shenanigans. Yeah, they asked it in the yeah. first fifteen minutes. We hadn't even well, started church new? yet. Yeah, they never, they yeah. were online. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just thought it was so funny because I'm like, not to be weird, that means you've never been in a you've church never, before. Yeah, if you think we're opening with, with preaching, preaching, that right. means you don't. Which is awesome that we have people who have never really been a part of yeah. church coming yeah. in. But that it was very. It'd funny. be great to not greet people and just. Be like John 4, oh, 1. And people are like, oh, backwards we're, service. We're, we're doing this. We're doing this right yeah. now? Backwards right now. Service. I think that's one of the reasons why people are so emotional here is because I think for a lot of people, this is their first experience. This church is very different in that no expectations, man. We're just going to love you. Well, I don't believe the way you believe. No. Yeah. Okay. We love you anyway. Right. I think that desire to for people to celebrate you is also the fear of people rejecting you. That's just me. I think people, uh, they yeah. over push sure. that one side Sure. because they're really afraid of being rejected. And so, so but they just want this really hyped up version. So of my it. question is, and maybe, maybe talking through the, the heart of it gets us to the, the answer, but, but what do you say and what do you do? How do you... So I'll How do you personally, let's start there before we talk to other people. How mm. do you personally get to that place of health? Every time I'm doing anything that I feel like could result in me being celebrated. So like, we're just like, oh man, like, you know, this is, you're going to, people are going to think it's great uh, or bad or whatever it is. It's bad. It's, was, it's only bad because it's, it's, a, it's an alarm, if you didn't hear it. It's an alarm that goes off on his phone. Most of the time, it's to whiten his teeth. No, that was, that's the old one. This, this, was, this was, I have a dentist at 2 o'clock. That was so I wouldn't forget. Check it. It's yeah. whitening his teeth. It was, I've it seen was, it. The, the, wait, you, the and it's so confusing. One is at 2 o'clock? Ibuprofen one's yeah. another. And he never yeah. does it's the It's a good enough lead time. Yeah. Four hours. But it, <laughs> yes. And it never does the thing. He never does the thing that it reminds him to do. Never does it. Well, I can't go so to the weird. dentist right now. It's at 2 o'clock. Anyway. 2.30. Oh, Okay. Uh, that was disappointment. Right. That's right. I know. I'm, I I'm proud. <laughs> you should be. Uh, I'm not looking for celebration. That's right. So, and again, this probably comes back to how I'm broken. So the flyover for me is even on Sundays, I really go back to this idea of where I get my worth and how God has pleased me based on what Christ has done. And so then I literally look at the span of my life. This is really how I do it. I go... You know, God's pleased me based on what Christ has done. There's nothing left to do. It's finished. And so I can look back. I can look on everything with joy. There's nothing I can get to add to that. I can look on it with joy. So to be satisfied in that God's pleased me based on what Christ has done. And then what I do is I will literally say to myself that I don't need anything from them. So like 
when I'm going up to do this, I'm literally telling myself, I don't need anything from the audience. I don't need anything from my peers. I don't need anything from these people. God has something for them. And so God just used me for whatever you have for them. So in any scenario, whatever that is, it's always like, I don't need anything from them because I have everything I need in Christ. And so if I, I just keep putting myself back in that place and it just to purify my motives. Why am I doing this? I don't need anything from them. Yeah. So that's it. So that's, so, that's my way of doing it. So does it then, and I'm just, I'm just pushing on this because it's, I think it is so multifaceted and I think it's so much deeper than I've ever given it credit for. I, I'll, I Does that then, because I, I, I fear making it sound like, well, I did that too. So, but I like, so when I did that, same, literally a very similar process of kind of self-talk, if you will, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and reminding myself of who I am in Christ. It got to a place, it was pretty negative for me hmm. because it was like, I don't need anyone, F you guys. Then I could chase after the very earthly physical things because yeah. I justified it as I can do whatever I want. Right, because God's already looked, so I can chase after my things. I can actually—that's probably where the enneagram comes in. I w- yeah, interesting. Because interesting. I'm never like that. That's okay. not—I'm not that. That's not my way. Yeah. My way is I struggle with pleasing. Mm-hmm. So because I want to make everybody happy, make everybody like me. Yeah. But for me, I'm not going to become a different human. I'm, that's just my—that's yeah. my brokenness. Right. You know what I mean? So for me, because of how I'm wired, I this is helpful for me. Like yeah. to be able to say, "Hey, I, I am doing this for one reason only." You know, I, I don't need anything from them. I don't need them to tell me, hey, it's okay. We like you. This was good. This was bad or anything like that. Uh, and that, that goes for good or bad. Yeah. Like if people want to, you know, rail me for something negative or they want to celebrate me for something positive, I can literally just say, hey, I'm, I'm literally up here for one reason. And that So is how do you me. know, and I love this. This is awesome. I kind of want to do this with each of us because it's fun. Uh, how do you know your motives are pure? How, how do you trust? Mm. Because what you just said made it sound like your personal motives are pure. Well, it's I, it's a purifying process. I'm not saying they're pure, but that is the goal. Because for me, for me, I, I have a negative reaction to it. Being over celebrated or being ridiculed both hurt me. They don't I, they don't feel good later. Mm-hmm. Like you know what I mean? Because then then it's like I put this pressure on myself. I was like, oh, that was so oh, great, and it turns into a negative for me. It's not a positive. Yeah. So I don't know if they're pure, but I am trying to get to a place where I'm good with myself. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like I can I can have peace after a sermon, after anything, yeah, where I can yeah, say yeah. I'm pretty peaceful. And that's the only way I can do it. Otherwise, otherwise if I, I always said this, the reason like when you guys did stand up, I said I could never do stand up because then it's all about whether or not I was good. If I'm preaching, that's not my measurement. Uh-huh. Mine is like, am I, am I following the Holy Spirit and doing what God wants me to do? And that help, that's easier for me to take whatever comes next. Yeah. Well, so. you, and, you and I have talked about before, because I think we both kind of struggle with this as well. For a while, anytime somebody would compliment me on a message, I didn't know how to react. To the point that one time I did a, I did a men's event and I walked literally from the pulpit to the car yeah. to get out of there because I felt like I had done well. I felt like I had delivered what God had. And I felt like I, you know, you know, you have, this sounds arrogant, but you have those times where you feel like you nailed it. Yeah, you did a good job. And I feel like yeah. I did a good job. So I literally walked That's straight scary. to the car because I didn't know how, I, I didn't handle, even though it's stupid because you you want the praise, right. but then when you recognize that it's something that's purely your gift and you're, that you're called to, that you're anointed for, that you don't know how to respond to it. And so I would literally run away from it. Or when people would try to compliment something that I had done, I would just deflect, like aggressively deflect I wonder deflect where it. that's from because I've watched for years. Most people do so much better with criticism, and I can't figure that out. Yeah. I can't figure out what in us is more okay with being told that we suck and we're crappy. It's like, and I, and I know that probably sounds weird to most people listening, but if you just think about it, if someone comes up to you with some corrections, most people take that better than if someone is like, you're the great, like you're the, I told you, you that you helped me with that. Yourself. I told you like when you said, when you're like, oh, thanks man. Somebody compliments you. I, cause I'm telling you the compliments are weird for me. It doesn't, it doesn't help me. So yeah. to just be able to acknowledge it and I'm move trying to on, figure out where that stems from. So me. good for me to be like, be like, oh, thanks man. No yeah. problem. Uh, what in us is better with criticism? That's crazy. I wonder. If, not, I don't like criticism. That's not, that's definitely not. Yeah, but, but like, that. It's not, I don't think anybody likes it. And that's why I think it sounds so weird to say it. It's not that people want the criticism. It's just that if they're met with kind of the same level of praise or criticism, just a little praise or a little criticism, the praise makes them feel more uncomfortable yeah. than the criticism. Not that they want it, but that right. it, it just, there's something in us that's like, oh, I wonder if it's because we've been lied to our whole lives by Satan. Like literally mm-hmm. Satan, we're told in scripture that he prowls around like a lion, like 
just talking crap on all of us. Yeah. Mm. If we just got so used to that, yeah, that the be. other side, the love, the unconditional love from the Father is yeah. so foreign. Yeah. We're like, whoa, whoa. Comfortable, like, not used to it, but comfortable yeah. with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. so weird. I wonder if part of it, too, is for guys like us, apparently not Joe, but guys like us, is that we, we're we constantly looking to improve. I'm constantly looking to get better. I'm constantly apparently looking I'm at not. how to develop. Apparently so, Joe's not. not. Well, he, Joe I'm, just said he doesn't like the criticism at all. Joe hit a level of, dare I say, perfection. Yes. Years well, ago. Well, my motives, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, his I motives mean, are all the motives of that. Clearly, yeah. you're an eight on the enneagram. I'm I'm confused who, who on the enneagram. You? That's a good description. It's, That's good. Own that. Yeah, it's yeah. there. There are three. there's a lot in his life that he's confused. Yeah, about. true. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I always think I think you're a three. I, I think you're a three what a too. Three is three's the, the three is the achiever. achiever. The achiever. Yeah, and two yeah, is the servant. Right. So he's got that achiever servant piece. So what's funny is you. my top three, which are all within like one or two of each other, is uh is a is a two, a seven, and an eight. I'm all. It's a big jump. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's right. It's confusing because I and I do believe that I have a little bit of all of that in me. Yeah, yeah. I think we yeah. everyone well, has. Everyone. Yeah, we all. Um, we possess all nine. Attributes of them. Do we though? Yeah. I do because I feel like I'm nowhere near nine. I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the furthest from you, a, uh, oh, that's a peacemaker. Right? peacemaker. Yeah. Yeah. I am a challenger. I just don't always do it out loud, mm-hmm. right? So there's that. But but yeah, you do. Actually, you always do it out loud. Do I? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe here because I'm very comfortable oh, okay. here, but okay. not like yeah, I yeah. wouldn't like. But I think that's important. You have to be comfortable there. Yeah, I have to know. I only want to express that in places where I feel like it could be received, right? right. Oh, okay. So yeah, because yeah. again, because we're all, including Joe, looking to get better, to grow. Oh, and so when somebody it. when somebody criticizes, that, see, does it feel good or weird? Feel good? Do you feel, yeah, how do you feel right now? <laughs> I don't so, want it. Get so it. when somebody, especially when one of us says something that could be deemed as critical or somebody that you know loves yeah. you says something that could be deemed as critical, it's made for construction. It's to make us better. Right. And right. we're always looking Being to get better. Being completely transparent. So uh, my, my call today uh, with this writing project, you know, I have these fears that they're going to be like, I hate it. For sure. That's mm-hmm. like real. Sure. Like, so I'm like, Heck yeah. yeah. I, and, and they're not, uh, the group isn't super like affirming of the, yeah. they're just like, it's kind of like. Well, it's a job good, for them. Right. Good, yeah. move on. It's not They're not like here good. to make you better or help right. you. Right. So, You're working for them. So yeah. part of that, like even I was talking about like the same coin where I'm just like, yeah, I have to just yeah. be like, I don't need anything from them. I just need to do the job. Yeah. Like, so whatever they give me, like, you know what I mean? And even yeah. then in this scenario, they need something from me. They're giving me feedback because yeah. they need something for me to do yeah. the job. And so that same idea, it's like, I don't like the criticism. I don't want to hear yeah. that they don't like it, that it's bad. And uh, just a challenge for me, just a journey for me to walk through that. And that's where I go back to this, like, you know what? Whatever they say about me doesn't change what God feels about me. Yeah. So I can go, I can go into that meeting and let them, they can actually rip me apart and I'll be okay. Yeah. Like that's, that's where I'm like, I'm going to be okay. Yeah. I won't like it, but I'll be fine. I have to constantly remind myself that most clients that come to me for a job, it's a person, they, they're actually hiring me, not the product. If they wanted just the product, they could go anywhere. And this is kind of true mm. for all of us to like take to heart. Like nobody's calling you just because they want a musician to show mm. up at their party. And I'm dead serious. They're hiring you. Like I want you personally because I like you as a person and I like your voice. I don't just want music. If I wanted just music, I'd find the cheapest music I could no, find. I'd put Spotify sure. on. Right. I would put a. I would exactly. I mean, I, I mean, two on, birds with one stone, folks. Cheapest. <laughs> 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 super cheap. I start with that, and I go. So you're, you're hiring me, so you want something from me. And when you give me criticism, you're not necessarily criticizing me. Now you're actually criticizing the product, hmm. which I'm very tied to. But at the same time, oh, I get good. to say. Like, you're hiring me because you like me, in, a, in, in lack of a better term, and now I made this product, and if you want to tweak it, you're not, it's not, that has no, no, that doesn't speak to my value in the slightest bit. It speaks to the product I made, which means that if you don't like it, I can improve. So right. there's a better way, there's something I could, I've lost money on projects because I've gone too far the other direction from the client thinking I was going to do something great, and they're like, it's not what I ordered. And I'm like, I'll be remaking that then, and I lose money on it's it. It's literally the process mm. of this writing. It's uh, like, that's what I was thinking. I had yeah. to restart in the beginning. Uh-huh. I had to redo the beginning, and uh, and it's it takes work to not take that as condemnation. A hundred, it, 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 it takes absolutely does. work. Yeah. Like, and again, it's actually because I take it as like, oh no, I have to write more. I'm like, no, it's deeper than that. It's not the yes. restarting. It's the what does this say about me? Yes. And I have to do, go through all that internally because again, believe it or not, the same thing with in the praise or pride side. Again, I think about so, any grand place. Everybody's different. Yeah. 
right. for me, I, when I'd read about actors who have imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, well, if, initially I was like, that's weird. I'm like, no, no, I get that. Everybody has that's, imposter syndrome. I yeah, get that. that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, the praise is too high. Do you know what I mean? You're almost like, in fact, back in the day when, uh, when I first started preaching, I did not like the feedback, <laughs> even if yeah. it was good. Yeah. I, I would go to Lisa and I'd say, what, tell me. Like, I want to learn. I'll Who learn from you. Who gave the worst? She did. Yeah. She actually, I, <laughs> yeah. No, we've joked about this. Our wives. <laughs> yeah. Because they just say it. And you're like, oh, that one hurt. I that thought you loved rough. me. Like, yeah, like, I thought you loved me. Yeah. She's, she's the, the technique has definitely grown over the years. But it was, it was where I thought I'd get the truest response. So if I was looking to, to improve, I've definitely realized in terms of actually growth and criticism, that's a smaller circle for me. Yeah, but that's what that's I had a, to that's learn. A small circle. I initially, when I first started preaching, I went to Ashley for affirmation, and she gave me truth. I didn't want truth. Mm. I wanted affirmation. Right. And so I had to realize, like, oh, when I want truth, I go to Ashley. Right. If I want affirmation, I go to other people. Right. And it's not that she doesn't affirm me. It's just that I have to know. I have to be willing to be cut down a little bit. And because again, she's not doing it mean. Right. Right. But if I ask her how it was, and then I, I know if I'm sensitive, I can't ask her right after the sermon. Because then even if she's like, yeah, it was really good. I'm like, you paused. Why did you pause? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just like the yeah. weirdest like yeah. insecurity. I actually hated the so good. It was good. Oh, well, so it was wasn't bad. great. Was that, mm, yeah. yeah. What do you, well, it's good. So this all started with like pride, right? How you deal with this. Josh, I'd love to hear. Right? Can you rephrase your question for Josh and answer it? Uh, we asked like six questions. Um, yeah. But one was like, like it's basically how, how do you, do you, how do you, you keep deal with, yeah. um, you're actually real good because you, you're a I'm just good. pretty phenomenal <laughs> musician. <laughs> no, you're, good. you're a good example. You're good. Of yeah. How do you fight off you. the... So you get, I, it sounds weird, you get praised more than most people I know because you're so good. Like, you really are at a, a pretty special level. And it's of, very tangible. Thank you. It's not like... Very tangible. Like, we've all heard singing before. Yes. Like, preaching can be like, it's a flavor. But you're yeah. like, no, you're objectively a great singer. That's why whenever you watch those talent shows, I always laugh because, like, it feels like 75% of the acts that go through are all musicians because we all have such an opinion and we all, we can hear. We have ears. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, like, a magic Trick. I'm like, I don't know if that magic was that good, right. you know? Right. You get praised so much. How do you fight Mostly off for your magic tricks. The uh, he's got good sleight of hand. Mm -hmm. Uh <laughs> how do you fight off the pride and the insecurities? Mm -hmm. And I guess I kind of unpack that a little bit. I think the the way God has led my life, uh preparing you, you know, he prepares you, he equips you because of getting sober and going through the whole step process. That is a fantastic module for life. The taking inventory, admitting that you're not God. You know, we've talked about the God complex, and that's where a lot of this fear and pride, for me, had stemmed from. Uh, feeling worthy, feeling enough, accepted, a part of, you know, once you get through it, uh, it's about daily, daily reprieve daily maintenance and all that, uh, daily inventory, which meshes perfectly with prayer and meditation. You know, I've taken a break from a lot of that for the past year. At first, was really out of spite. It was just, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Because it wasn't out of, for the criticism or praise, abundance of attention or lack of attention or financial means. It really was just, you just get burnt out. Yeah. In this last year, just seeking God. And, and in that process, these things weigh less on my mind, like how do I look, how do I sound, um, how, how do, what do people think of me, blah, blah, blah. That has become less and less, and it's become more of the serving others. And that's what I was taught, was yeah. when you're to be right-sized, <laughs> my sponsor and I would joke about all the time, like you can't be less self-centered. You can't say, I'm going to be less self-centered. Right. Because that sentence starts with I'm. Yeah. And he says, so, so start your day thinking about other people. Talk to God, take care of yourself, and then so that way you can take care of other people. So and you, you so, clearly don't care about how you look. I mean, look what you're no, wearing. No, I mean, look at me. Um, and we're wearing matching this thing. guy. Yeah. Uh, but you said something in the beginning that I think was really cool, was the process of addiction and recovery mm -hmm. set you up, which it's, this is an odd plug, but if you haven't, go back to Sunday's sermon. It was... Uh, April 30th was Sunday. Sunday, April yeah. 30th. Yeah. April 30th sermon. Uh, Joe preached it, and it all the whole concept was how God uses the bad things, how God takes mm -hmm. the, the, the harmful things, which is so funny yeah. that I feel like if you if you haven't had kind of your late if, if you haven't gone through that, if mm -hmm. you haven't had that where it's like I gotta climb out of something mm -hmm. or I'm humiliated, it's why I 
I've seen guys who fall in ministry who actually do make a recovery and who brought back. They're so much better because there's humility there. Yeah. That, it's that same idea where that, I mean, how can, you, how can you put that much weight on what somebody else is saying when you crawled out of the, the nothing? I mean, you lived out of your car, you were strung out, mm-hmm. you had to go through, like, it's kind of hard to give that much of a rip, like, it is, oh, you didn't do good. It's like, you know what, but I'm alive. Mm-hmm. It, it, like, it was tough, though, and that's why I say only in the last year, because the last few years, three to four, I was living out of my car. But at the same time, it, it would be... Now you're in an apartment so, smaller than your car. Which di- is weird. Yeah, with, a, with a man bigger than your car. <laughs> <laughs> very true, actually. <laughs> and I would have the, uh, the joy of playing these awesome, beautiful weddings, and I get to meet these awesome people. I'm part of the furniture. I'm part of the atmosphere. I'm part of the ambiance of this. But also I get to chronicle just pieces of people's lives. And I, I actually appreciated when I'd be criticized because it mean like people listen. I mean, that mean they listened. But I can't it, imagine somebody criticizing criticizing you. What were they criticized you funny. on? Song selection? Clothes. Well, and, and but, but song I, selection I could absolutely see. the only see. thing I could think but of. That, and I, like but what's funny thing. is there are surface things where, and I'm sure people would come up and say like, oh, I couldn't hear you very well. Like That's not really a criticism on your sermon. Right. That's a criticism on just, you know, whatever. Sound yeah. system. It's it, weird it, how you take even those things personally. Yeah. Though. Yeah, sure. Oh yeah, for it's, sure. Isn't that weird? Or like, yeah. Because it, it, you just finish a killer song. And they're like, hey, hey, hey. You're like, yeah? Can you turn it down? <laughs> Can you turn it down? It, down? it has become that the music itself, and I think, and being in worship here, taking me out of it. And I think back, like, where it comes from. I mean, I, I don't, I never had a lack of attention or praise or support or encouragement, correction from my, my parents or my, my grandparents. It really just kind of stemmed from something I've learned with, with you guys. Understanding my self-worth with God was totally alien. That has just been this uh, really beautiful process. When I played the, um, I don't know which one it was. It was the Kiss Country thing. Yeah, Woodward Park. Which was one of the one of the larger opportunities for me, just in the massive humans. They were I, all I, really I, tall. It was the Nephilim. <laughs> yeah. He played, a, Nephilim he played a show for yeah. the yeah. Nephilim. Like, yeah. Six fingers. Encore. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and those I, are ogres. I, there was a moment I sang, You're My Sunshine. I play it in kind of a rocky, bluesy uh, yeah. way where it starts, and it doesn't sound like it's going to be anything close to You're My Sunshine. Right. I start singing it. You feel this oh, in the crowd. Yeah. And, it's a great and song. everyone starts singing it. I kept playing and I had to, I remember I said, everyone look around for a moment and it, look around, everyone's smiling. Yeah, that's and awesome. It was so cool. That is cool. Um, and it really was that same connection that we, we feel in worship mm. um, that I feel when you guys preach. And so then I got off stage and then people would come over, which was really, it is humbling. Familiar faces, un- new faces. And it was ironic that there was uh, two of them were pastors. I'm like, hey, do you, uh, do you? No way. It? I felt like I heard the devil in that music. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we need to talk to you. Here's a book. By the way, you were moving um. your hips. There's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of gyrating up there, pastor. I think it's actually really cool that idea that you had to, the recovery process puts you in a very different place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I want to hear from Floyd too, Me but I'm curious to know what do you do like if you win an NBA championship? Like where, where is the place Go where, to Disneyland. like, uh, how do you That's right. well receive like massive accomplishments? I'm just picking something like you're an NBA champion mm-hmm. and because you made the winning shot and you're the MVP of that. Like, like what's the process of then how do you accept stuff like that in a, in a healthy way? But Floyd, I want to hear kind of how you deal with pride or insecurities, whatever. I heard a long, long time ago, I've tried to apply this. It's not always easy, but I've tried to apply this. Never listen to the greatest praise or the greatest criticisms. G.L. Johnson told me that right. when I was a kid. It was, you're never as good or as bad as people say you are. Right. And I was like, yeah, oh. Yeah. Wow. yeah. It's and funny because we, we have a bunch of those. My, my pastor said, the, the people cheering the loudest will be the same people coming for your head. He used to totally. say it all the time. That's hmm. good, yeah. Yeah, which is a much meaner way to say yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And, Violent. And kind of biblical, Jeez. actually. Wow. Yeah, never, I thought about that. I was like, what did oh. you, you say J.L. Johnson was? You're what? Uh, you're never as good or as bad as people say. Yeah, right? that's good. Being it's right just, it, was, it was just very simple. It was like, because the, there are. There are people who say you are the greatest thing that's mm-hmm. ever happened to the planet. Those you're people not. worry me. This is interesting with you because they... When we first met, you had a crowd of those people. And I had, and I had panic attacks. So there we go. Well, I'm what's funny is every one of those people abandoned you. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean that like they're terrible, but no. they acted like they literally would pull me aside. I had multiple people, probably yeah. two or three people, pull me aside and were like, hey, we think you're really good, but Joe's my guy. Yeah. Like putting me in my place, like... Yeah. 
I'm like, I don't know what you think is happening here. This doesn't even make sense to me. In the moment, I wasn't the person they wanted me to be. They were freaking gone. gone. And the same is true with people who are like, you're a heretic, you're the worst. It's like, no, you're neither one of those things. Well, we we see that pattern here, right? Somebody will come here. Oh, this is the greatest church I've ever been to. I'll see you guys next week. (laughs) Never see them again. That's happened in every church I've ever been. That's happened everywhere I've ever done ministry. I don't know what makes people do that. Do you know they, who didn't do that? They will walk about who? Pat Biggs. Pat Biggs is the one person who really? was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever been part of and I'll never see again. And he was back every week. That's like the one yeah. was so over the top yeah. about how great it was at First Baptist. And then actually stuck around. And there are a few it's so that rare. stick around. I, in fact, I remember the right. one. Why come up to us and say, this is the greatest place I've found my new home. What happens in the seven days where you don't show up Moving and then on. you decide you never? I, I'm I always in issues with commitment. Or? I want to interview the people. Like, I want to, yeah. and I'm Moving like, on look, to the next greatest thing. Yeah, you don't yeah. even have to come back to the church. I yeah. just got to know what made you say it and then what changed. Yeah. I'm mm. so curious. Go ahead, Floyd. Keep going on your. Oh, no, that's, that's pretty much it. And, and that's why the, the praise is hard for me to accept. And I tend to deflect it because I do a, the same with a lot of the criticism. Um, so for me, it comes down to just basically knowing knowing who I am, recognizing that even if I have an off day. So are you off. saying you deflect a lot of the criticism? Is that what you're saying? I will de- I will deflect the most significant of the criticism. Okay. Like yeah. the harshest. The harshest. Yeah. 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 If, if somebody's coming against... I mean, you live with her, though. So. Yeah. She's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and it's a lot. It and is often. Lot. Often. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't even um, see Stephanie saying something. I, I, can't, even I can't picture her. I could not. Like, I can't even think of it. <laughs> I feel like if she would just say something else nice. Yeah. Like, do you like my sermon? Your shoes looked great yeah. up there. <laughs> That's how I feel. That's you're, so so cute. Cute. So kind. Yeah. you're so cute. You're so cute. And you're like, okay. Yeah. Do you even ask her for feedback when you preach? Do you think I have to ask her? Or she just Yeah, I, I have asked her in the past, but then I recognize too that for her, like to be mean is pretty far outside of her character. Yeah, it's not her story. Um Even to be critical is somewhat outside of her character. Yeah. So you know who I ask is Trey. I ask my oh, son. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. Because he will crap on you in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. And he's also willing to give you honest and sincere. We've practice. actually had great conversations when he cuts my hair. I like that about Trey. And I like that about people in general. I get it's the authenticity, the honesty. I just like yeah. honesty. Yeah. Like it's okay for you to say negative things. It is. Sure. Negative things aren't necessarily bad. Yeah. It's okay if you criticize, just be as, as free with your praise. Right. Like it's okay to say, like, hey, that wasn't great. But here's the other 10 things that you did really like yeah. be open and free yeah. with the with the praise also. Mm-hmm. And I've learned to kind of dissect both. What are they really praising? Because it's not me. It's something that I did. It's an action. What was the action right. that resonated? Yeah. Right. But is there something you could do that they should praise? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like when you get your PhD, is that something where I'm just asking, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, is that how do you receive that? Like, what's a what's a healthy way to receive? You got a PhD and I was like, wow, that's a big accomplishment. Good job. A, a new job. Yeah. yeah seriously. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure, man. I, I don't know. I, I think again, it comes back to the same thing with the the same thing with the praise and the criticism, right. the level of commitment, the amount of study, the the willing the knowledge to, behind now. It's an like accomplishment. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, willingness yeah. to yeah. do what what the vast majority of the rest of the world is not willing to do. The sacrifices made. What are they What are they praising? Same thing with criticism. I try to do the same thing with criticism. What is it that they're criticizing? Because they're not criticizing me. They're criticizing an action. Right. Right. So what in that yeah. action didn't resonate? Uh, or the opportunity to do. You said they, that most people aren't willing to do. I, I always and it's because Ashley just did this and so it's mm-hmm. like I think the vast majority of people don't actually have the opportunity to get a doctorate or get any yeah. education whatsoever. Yeah. I think even just having the humility to say yeah I did something that, that other people aren't willing to do yeah. but I also did something that I'm privileged enough to oh, do. Like I, yeah. That the majority of the world yeah. doesn't have access to. And recognizing that yeah. and I, I'm very angry at the concept that privilege has become a bad word and yeah. it's like no like I consider it very lucky Mm-hmm. to have the things that we have yeah. and to have the opportunity and the the passion and the strength and the, like, yeah. you really did commit to something big. Ryan, Ryan does yeah. not and like the word blessed. It. He's more of a lucky guy. He likes it. I, you know, it's not that I don't like it. We've I feel like, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually, I think I preached a whole sermon on it because it's fan. a very weird, uh, in the same way that I think uh, privilege has a different connotation now, mm-hmm. blessed has such a, a weird connotation. I feel I think like it's, it's virtue signaling. Like it's like, because Instagram I'm did blessed. the hashtag 
God it, blessed for yeah. so long that I was like, okay, you guys ruined it. Like you guys seriously ruined say a great word. No, you're like, no, I'm going to say it. Nothing gonna to say do with exactly. it. It, just, <laughs> yeah. it yeah. fell to me this way. It's funny. Yeah. So what do you do? So now, now you have a, a major accomplishment. What's a healthy way? And again, this can be different for everybody because what, are, depending on how you're broken yeah. or, you know what I mean? What right. your, your deal is. But forget um, about all the brokenness. What's a healthy way? To, what's a healthy way? You know, you, you, you have some major accomplishment that's, you know, verifiable. Like I said, a champion, you won a championship and you were the starter and got the MVP. Yeah. You know, how does that, how do you, how do you receive that? Uh, well, I think it's weird because I think again, for guys like us that are always looking for growth, we're always looking for the next thing, not to speak for you guys, but for a large part of what we would do and what I would do, I'm going to celebrate for a moment. I'm going to have a good cigar, probably a good scotch. And then I'm going to start looking for the next thing to accomplish. Okay. Part of that's just the way we're wired. Yeah. What do you think, Ryan, Josh? What do you think is, what's a good way to accept accolades? Mine is a little different in terms of, I love the, like, I agree with the first, the celebration part. Um, the cigar. The cigar, 100%. You didn't even win. Why are you smoking a cigar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, I, I, I think I would celebrate a ton. For me, I just keep going back to, I don't, it, God, it sounds so negative. And so I've been fighting, say, but like, I, I don't think any of this matters. Right. I think it's just fun. Yeah. And I think God has given us God has given us the ability to exist in this playground and have a great time and we take it so seriously that I think we ruin it. And I think the truth yeah. is this is just fun. Mm-hmm. Like let's have a ball with your with your successes, with your victories, with your failures mm. and you just move forward through this life. The thing that it, it's funny but as we're talking about like the what keeps us grounded and what how we stave off that pride. I, mine is uh, like I'm going to die and I don't matter. And it sounds so negative, but it's, it's Solomon. I mean, it's just, I have resonated with him for most of my life. He's not my favorite character in the Bible, but I, I feel like I, not that I relate to him. Uh, I mean, I do because he's the wisest man on the world. So mm, I clearly do. Yeah. Um, but like, this is all vexation of spirit. Right. This goes away. So your awesome accomplishment that you're in the 1% of, that you're so cool, means nothing. Nine, means nothing not to, not yeah. to drop you down and yeah. to like hurt you in any way, but to put you in a healthy place of going, oh sure. my gosh, it's awesome, which also means that now as I celebrate, that doesn't mean anything either. Right. So I get to do these great things, accomplish great things, fail in horrible ways. None of it matters. So I get to, whereas Solomon had a very negative turn that was kind of like, none of this matters. It's bad. Mine is like, none of this matters. So let's have a party. Sure. What's well, funny yeah. is he yeah. said, eat, drink, be merry. You know, eat, for drink, tomorrow, which for tomorrow we die is the most beautiful. I have said yeah. it like when right. I first read that, it resonated so deeply within me that it was eat, drink, be merry. And he says, work with your hands. Yep. He's like, I, to like me, that. I'm just like, none of this matters. Doesn't mean I sit back and do nothing. It actually means that I can chase things and pursue mm-hmm. sure. things yeah. and have yeah. a blast. Yeah. And whether I achieve them or not, it doesn't matter. Because it's not in the destination, right? It's in the yeah. journey. It's the process. The, the piece of paper at the end of my degree program is not where all of the knowledge came. Right. Oh, it's, for sure. it's in the experience. Yeah. It, it's, it's, funny is, it's funny is because uh, I've been on this joy thing and it's the, it's similar to what we're talking about here is that at the, the last day, God's going to be pleasing me based on what Christ has done so I can have joy. I've always wondered how do you have joy? Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord yeah. always. Again, I say rejoice. All that. I'm like, how do you have joy? And then we talk about it not being an emotion, you know, but, but a state of being. The joy for us, and I think it's real, is because God's perspective on us doesn't change. So you can have joy. You can actually have joy and be happy and joy and be sad. Yes. You know, you can actually, the emotions yeah. can run the gamut. Well, that was, that, my first, that was my first counseling session, whereas that you can hold joy and sorrow in two, two hands at the same time. Whereas mm-hmm. I always thought like, I can't have sorrow because I'm supposed to be joyful. Right. So I can't have those together. Yep. And my counselor was beautiful and walked me through this cool process of like, I don't know, you can absolutely be grateful for what you have and be have joy, but also be sad about certain things. Yep. And I was like, oh, is that even possible? Like I was, that was mm-hmm. news to me. I think that's yeah. where the fun part comes in. And even like the you know medium I'm going to have today is I keep going back to his own. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't need anything. I can be joyful. I can go through this. I can get wrecked in this yeah. meeting. But and you 
still have joy. the opportunity to do something that very few people get to do. Right. So why not, instead of focusing on the, oh, they didn't like something. Right. I mean, like, and it's weird that we do it ahead of time. That's what's funny. It's like, so dumb. They she, might think this is the greatest thing ever. The, it's yeah. the worst. It's not crazy. I'm the worst at this. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> I'm terrible at this stuff. I, I really have am. this. I have this vision, and it's so funny. Just in the the, the vision that I have of getting to heaven. Uh, when I was young, and I was just painted this picture by other people, I would always, you know, think of it as you get to heaven, you're standing in the gates, and there's this like. And I have, I have this totally different view now where I get to heaven with like my hands on my knees and I'm bent over panting because I like was sprinting the whole time on this planet because mm-hmm. it's just fun where I was like running around having a blast and then I died and I was like, oh, am I here? Yeah. Okay. Oh gosh. Can I settle down now? Yeah. Can I relax? Because I'm like, I love the idea of just, I want to experience all that this world has to offer because I really do view this as the ancient Hebrews had this kind of parable of that God created this playground and he just wants his kids to get along. And so I'm like, oh, he just wants us to play well together. So like, let's have fun. And when things happen, we skin our knees. When there's a fight on the playground, like we handle that properly because we know this is all God's creation. Yeah. And so now it's just like a, guys, like let's rally together have a blast. The whole goal of this is to just point people back to the Father because, like, that's where all this matters. And I'm like, I, so to me, I just, I love the idea of how positive it is for me. And I don't, I don't know if this is positive for other people, but for me, it's so positive to be like, oh, this doesn't matter. Yeah. It just doesn't. Like, right. you preach a good sermon, you preach a bad sermon, God works through it. Yeah. You get praised by your boss or hammered by your, destroyed by your boss because he thinks you did a terrible job. Who cares? Like, yeah. you j- you pick yourself. I don't know. There's a well, resiliency the, to that. That's the part we talk about where some people are mad about, you know, somebody getting saved in the last minute on their deathbed. And I'm always like to Christians, I'm like, that's yes. the worst existence. Like, what are you talking about? Like, because yeah. they're like, oh, it's not fair. They get to go to heaven because they made a deathbed confession. I'm like, they didn't have what we have. It's right. not fair because they missed out they missed on out. this. We I'm are. so, if you're not, and I, 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 Joe and I have talked about this a lot. If you're not happy when somebody accepts Christ in their last breath, you're, you're insane. You're doing this yeah. wrong. Right. You're insane to me. Because basically everything I'm going through now in life, just as a human, is like I get to have peace. I can, I can have joy. I can have peace. Yeah. Even when I'm not having peace, it's available to me. I'm like, you right. think, I, could, mm, I could move into that. You wow. think you're yeah. missing out. That's good. You yeah. honestly think you're missing out right now by following God. Because that's what you're saying. That you missed out on the stupid life that that person lived right. because you're a Christian. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, you need to change your perspective. They're missing out. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have the abundant life. They don't have the yeah. capacity to live the abundant life. We're told that before we are saved, we are a slave to sin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't have freedom yeah. before Jesus. you're a Christian. Yeah. Dude. And so, like, don't you want people to be free? Yeah. And it's weird because it's free to do whatever they want. Yeah. It's, well, not all things, are, or all things are permissible, not are ben- all beneficial. And that's where that comes from. That's that whole ah, Jesus dang. finishing it gives uh-huh. you this crazy freedom. And the reality is we're talking about, like, how to handle praise well or poorly or stuff like that is it really starts back to is what is that going to impact in your eternity and your life and your existence and your identity and God and nothing. nothing. So then you really can handle it any way you want. You can. You really can handle it any way you want. And it's for you to figure out, basically, I always think it's, it's for you to figure out how to have that peace, how to lay your head on a pillow at night and, and get a good night's rest how to actually, to, to function properly. It's going to be different for all of us. It just is. Like you said, the personalities are different, so we're all going to handle this differently. And you really do need to figure it out. I think the, one of the burdens of this life that I can't stand is that we're so busy chasing financial gain, financial mm-hmm. security, that we don't spend time to actually introspectively look at, like, how do we function? How am I healthy? What's, right. What is the right move for me in this situation? Well, and the, the financial security is really just for that peace, peace of mind. Isn't that funny? That's it. We put, we put a lot of weight on that. So in regards to, like, the, the joy and the sorrow and all that, having, yeah, walking in this, in this life with just, just faith that everything is being taken care of. And, and, and that is faith. That is. That is a good and, But also that. respecting and understanding free will, people's free will. So Sunday morning comes around, we, we, we're going out of shenanigans to start worship, and I hear, hey, Josh, out of the corner. 
and it's my old buddy Trayvon. We used to be close buddies in high school, mm -hmm. and uh, with his cousin Troy. And he was here on Sunday. He was here on Sunday. No way, that's so cool. I had seen him. Um, he graduated the year before me, so this we're talking 14 years ago. You know, he graduated, and sorry to age you, bud. Life hit him hard. Basically, I didn't know if I'd ever see him again. Mm -hmm. um, I would see him occasionally at the the mug that I used to work at and, and it wouldn't be the best situation you know mm -hmm. and then I see him here he says something we come up we go back here to catch up and he's like I knew I'd see you again oh, that's cool. you know uh, I didn't think I would find you here though uh, oh he did wait he didn't know you worked here no he's uh, he's with he's with uh, he's with Center for, Center, uh, Centers for Living oh no way and so he didn't know you were he that's didn't know I was crazy. here he just saw me and I'm like oh dude so I had <laughs> dropped my guitar and I go hug him that's awesome I hadn't seen him in so long At, on the other hand my buddy Angelo skipped town recently and so we I don't know if I'll ever see him again so there was this literal jo mix of joy and sorrow wow Man, I, I, I'm just as small. I'm the smallest part of this. I'm, to, I'm infinitesimal. I just get to enjoy and be a part of people's I would, lives. I would have said infantile, for, but that's fine. Yeah. That started with the story of Charles Stanley. Yep. I am always amazed at how we tangent. Yeah. yeah. We do it well. It's yeah. pretty impressive. It's funny. So we moved to Ravi Zachariah because, you know, two, yeah. two people who Prominent are influential guys. in the Christian world. Yeah. And that was kind of our way. Like, we don't know anything about Charles Stanley, but Ravi Zachariah. Right? Isn't that funny? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to ask Reddit. What do you want to do? I do. If you could download on Ask Reddit, if you could download a field of knowledge or skill into your brain instantly. Matrix style. Matrix. Yeah, it's Matrix. What would you learn? Oh, oh this man. is one of my favorite questions. I used to do this... Mm -hmm. uh, when I would lead trips to Mexico, it was one of the team building ones. It was like kind of snap your finger genie thing. I've got mine that I think I figured out. It's, All right. you, I can't, you, can't, I you can't change your body though. Like, so this is, you're not, you're not, no, no, no. It's, a, it's a skill. It's a download. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I have two that I fight over in my head. I think I have the winner, but what do you guys, does anything come to mind for you guys? Well, you immediately go to the matrix and you see all the things uh, that he downloaded, how to fly a chopper, Kung Fu, all the different techniques. Uh, oh, chopper? Yeah. That, that was when yeah. I were trying to escape. Yeah, oh, that's did a great right. Download. Uh, so, do you have one, do you have one Floyd or Josh? Okay. I, it's you, hard because, because you're downloading the knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. But then you still have to apply it. Well, you're about, well we're going to say, oh, that's again, what this we're going to say, that's the, matrix, we're saying the yeah. matrix, if you, you'll yeah. download Kung Fu and you could do it. Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah. that's what I mean, though. You like, might still pull a muscle, though. I'll give you my, my second one first. Cool. My, my, my second one is the ability to play any instrument. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. To literally any instrument in the world to be able Are to you pick saying up. Proficiently? Oh no no no! Like I'm, oh, okay, I'm phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> look at me hitting drums. Yeah, you know. No, it would be like I'm I'm amazing. It's so at, weird because my gut is, is. is drums. It's just weird to pick an instrument because I'm like I'm not a musician, but my gut was like I want to be able to play the drums really well. Really? I don't even know why. I don't even think about it until the moment you ask me. I'm like, right. I want to play the drums. I just think well. like we have a piano in our house. We have, Ashley's very mu uh, musical. Shepard is. A phenom, actually, and so I, I like. I'd love to be able to walk by any piano in the world and just be mm -hmm. able to jam. Like when we're in London, how they have the piano set up at the different train stations. Yeah, I would love to sit down and jam. I would love to like the the thought of seeing, especially when like a group of musicians who don't know each other get together. If they're really good, they mesh in seconds, oh, and you're just like that level of. I, there's like a spirituality to is, it man. that is so baller. Yeah, and my sister All is right. a, unbelievable. So that's my second one. Is I've the, got, is the I've music. got it. Yeah, master. Of, I won't say all languages because that's not fair. But that's like, my number one. Okay, so it's, it's to be able to. No, mine is to, to proficiently communicate in every single language. I would say that's it, my seemed like, one. it seemed like too big to say the every language, yeah. but it's it's languages. Yeah. No, it's like I'd love yeah. to that's because I'm trying to think of any skill I've really wanted I've went to try and go after it right outside of drums I felt like eh, I don't think I can do it but the one thing I thought I've always said when I retired I wanted to like just study like Hebrew yep. Italian Chinese so. I think I think that would be the most I don't think there's anything that would open the world up more to you mm -hmm. and that's my my favorite thing is travel like I yeah. love traveling and so the ability to go to any place in the world communicate with the people what because honestly if you every place i've ever been i try and learn you know phrases or yeah. sure yeah. even trying it sounding like an idiot they love you so much oh because they're you're putting so, effort oh they're so yeah. happy. i watch all those tiktok videos where they have somebody who doesn't look like we'll just say a white guy and japanese people mm -hmm. and all of a sudden he's speaking with the dialect you know and the accent those are my favorite they're, videos. Like, they're, 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 shocked. Fil they're filming him yeah yeah, yeah. Like, all he's doing is speaking their language yep. other people you know in the mean? restaurant too they're just like, like what and it's He's so fun. fun and that's all it is it's fun yeah. there's nothing it's else so they I, feel so connected and known and loved because this guy who's nothing like them yeah. 
knows them. I was knows thinking language, language uh, food, or music, and I couldn't choose. Yeah. Downloading on languages, downloading the ability to cook any food I wanted oh, or yeah. be able to write or play any music I wanted. Mine that came to mind seems really shallow now. I do, I do like the idea of the musical instrument because I think that would be to be able to like at some point, like after I finish my PhD, I want to learn how to play the guitar. Yeah. Just for myself. Like a nylon string guitar sounds so yeah. beautiful Hit to buddy. me. Yeah, but I don't, <laughs> yeah, I don't right, think right I have here. the skill set though. The, I don't to put the lessons. No, he's saying oh, he yeah. can teach you. you. Just Josh is trying to make money, That's which true. leads perfectly into my the one that I actually think would. Now Investing. that I'm going to say it out loud, how to trade uh, the ability to predict the stock market. Oh, I wonder well, if you could. I wonder if that's a downloadable skill. Well, okay. How about this? You understand the market as much as Warren Buffett. That's a downloadable skill. Like just the same knowledge Warren Buffett. So has. this is like Does uh, Buffett understand limitless. the market because he's more of a long term investor. It would be. Isn't it? Is what's it funny is it would be like limitless, limitless. Yeah. in that you can yeah. see trends type thing. Yeah, the ability to see trends from observing and all. And there's got to be better traders than others. You know what yeah. I mean? Like there's obviously people that are really good is at. Is it so weird minimal. that that feels just like too much work? Because even if I had the knowledge, <laughs> I still have well, to like. It's because we watch the way because we watched the way Dave did it, where it was just like he's just glued to it. <laughs> but I yeah, Actually, I still have I know. to focus well, on it. Yeah, and there's yeah. money in there. I had so many friends that'd be like, oh, "How you doing?" Oh, you know, this, my stocks are like they're just like you know they're watching it all the time. I, I couldn't do it. That's I'd actually lose money why because I'd throw it in there and I'd leave it. I'd it's like, why Bye. I stopped day trading is because it determined my mood for the day. It was consuming. So it, it, you you wake up, you know, I'd wake up at four because you have to like see all the stuff going on. Stock market opens at six or something, six thirty, and then I would trade for a few hours and I would trade a, so many trades just trying to make money. And I'll never forget there was a day where I made it. You know, I was a kid, so it was like I made like thirty seven hundred bucks in an hour cashed out went snowboarding for the rest of the day and i was like this is the greatest day ever hmm. and within a few days of that i lost a couple grand and i was pissed the rest of the day and i went oh i have to stop like th know. this is if this is dictating my mood i don't want to because i even thought best case scenario i make a ton of money doing this but my mood is weird yeah so i went nope I'll get a job. Like literally, it changed everything because it was dictating too much of my life. Yeah. It was no fun. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, I would be upset when the bears would lose for like a week. I couldn't imagine if it was my money every morning. There's no guarantee. Do you know what I mean? Like you could have made all the right, right decisions mm -hmm. and and lose your ass. Yeah, Just because saying. the 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 CEO of that company could do something dumb. They could right. pass away and the t the stock tanks. You don't know. Did yeah, you yeah. say that your first one was language? Yeah. My oh, okay. Was language. You know what? I. I Mm, I gotta change mine to downloading every recording, coaching lesson, and vi everything on uh, all boxing. Every so you'd be a great skill boxer? of boxing. I just think that'd be so cool. My my number three is is like martial arts because yeah. I just oh okay so, so all like yeah, all matrix yeah, yeah, okay yeah. Yeah. no yeah, number three definitely would be martial arts yeah because it's like you're like it'd just be fun. What's funny is you're I feel do like every just be like oh did you want to see Krav Maga? Well, could you imagine even in even the fact in the, you like, pronounced it. <laughs> McGraw. <laughs> what is it? That's that's Tim McGraw's cousin. Yeah, it's, it's Crop Maggie. Cobb, Cobb McGraw. What is it? Yeah, what it's corn it? on the corn <laughs> on the Cobb Maggie. Crop McGraw. What is it? You just put an extra R. Yeah, Crop yeah. McGraw. Yeah. Crop Maga. Crop. Um, I just think it'd be so fun hmm. to like even in like jujitsu to be rolling and just know every little move that's there. Right. In that be, situation, you oh, like. You but get, you from get, that point, you can then create. Well, and an instinct too, where you don't even think about, like you know, they just, they just, you have access to them. I think I don't know if it was Miles Davis or it was another very famous jazz musician. Uh, he said, "Learn everything you know, and when you play, forget it all." Oh, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty awesome. I the one that stuck with me actually for woodworking, as a matter of fact, was the it was something like we perfect the fundamentals so that we can break all the rules. Because mm. the people who want to like freestyle play music, mm -hmm. you have to perfect the fundamentals first. You can't just freestyle. Style. I'm, I'm actually trying to teach my well, kid this because he's he loves just messing around. I'm like, dude, you have to take lessons on unless stuff. you're like a savant or something. Yeah, yeah. but but even then, you 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 know all the stuff right. first. That's true. And yeah. so like with woodworking, I wanted to skip to the freestyle crazy stuff, and it was like, but you got to learn how to like hand cut a dovetail first. And I'm yeah. like, no, that takes forever, and it's a ton of work, and I don't want to learn it. Yeah, it's like, well, you're not going to be able to do other joinery that's really cool, so you know the very basic mm. fundamentals. My phrase is that everything can be solved by kicking. I like that one. <laughs> It's, a, it's, it's not a, wrong. It's like a roadhouse philosophy. It's not wrong. Yeah. 
just with a kick. Think of any. Try and f- think of a situation I can't solve with kicking because I can. Because so, I can. Because I can. <laughs> so there. I can solve everyone. When, when you cur- when your kid is misbehaving. Yeah. I mean that's the perfect. That's the per- that's, that's, the, yeah. that's lesson one. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. That's, that's how they teach you. That's how you critique their their playing. Yeah. When yep. you when your marriage is on the rocks. <laughs> Lesson two. We're just going right down the playbook. <laughs> Seriously, from top to bottom. Right? Just going right down the playbook. When a, congreg- when a congregant doesn't like what you're saying? Yep, that's it. I mean, I'm telling you, <laughs> he's right. You can, he has nailed this. Kicking. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us on You Won't Hate It. I'm Josh. I'm Ryan. I'm Floyd. And I'm Rob McGraw. <laughs> it's Tim McGraw's brother. <laughs>